So here we wish to realize the lion threat as a sequential circuit. And we're going to make it for the problem with two lions. And we have already previously seen how we can make the state transition graph to realize this problem. And in this state transition graph, we have four different states. S0, S1, S1 tilde and S2. The inputs and the output to our system are already in binary form. So what we need to do now before we can make the truth table is to make a state assignment. So we have four different states. So our state set here is given by S0, S1, S1 tilde and S2. And we need to represent these states with two bits and we're going to call the first bit Q1 and the second bit we will call Q2. So S0 we will call 00, S1 we call 01, S1 tilde we will call 11 and S2 we will call 10. And to simplify this let's take the state assignment and put it into the state. So now this state is represented as 0, 0. We have one state represented as 0, 1, 1 as 1, 1. And the last state here is represented by 1, 0. So now we are ready to make the truth table for this problem. So here is parts of the truth table where we, ha where we have enumerated the states and the inputs. And we have given all the possible, all the 16 possible combinations of the state and inputs and now what we want to do is to define the output function for q1 plus the function for q2 plus and then the danger function and we can do this now directly by just looking at our state transition graph it is usually easiest to fill this out one row at a time and then fill in all the different functions at the same time so now what we do is that we start in the state that we call 0, 0, and then we look at the input 0, 0, and it is this input that we have here. So what will happen now, we will stay in the state 0, 0, and danger will be 0. Next, we look at, we stay in state 0, 0, and now we get the input 0, 1. So this is this input that we have here. Then it means that we go to the state 0, 1, and we have a 1 as an output. If we have a 1, 0 as input, it means that we stay in the state 0, 0 and we have a 1 as an output. Next line, we look at the input combination 1, 1. Here we stay in the 0, 0 state and we have the output 1. Now we go to the next state, which is represented by 0, 1, and we look at what will happen when we have 0, 0. So this is this input that we have here. This means that we will stay in the state 0, 1 with a 1 as an output. If we have 0, 1 as an input, it is this one. So we will stay in state 0, 1 and we will have a 1 as an output. The next line means that we have the input 1, 0. It means that we have this one here where we go to the state 1, 1 with a 1 as an output and with a 1, 1 as an input, we will go back to the 0, 0 state also with a 1 as an output. Continuing to the state that is represented by 1, 0, it is this state over here. The first line here is 0, 0 input, so we have this input. It means that we stay in the 1, 0 state and with a 1 as an output. Then for a 0, 1 input, we have this input here so it means that we stay in the one zero state with a one as an output one zero when we are in state one zero is not represented here but if you can recall this was not possible so this cannot happen so what we do in this case is that we just make uh, lines here instead we will later call this the don't care set or a part of the don't care set continuing if we have one one as an input it is this input here, so it means that we go to the 1, 1 state with a 1 as an output. And finally, we look at the state that is represented by 1, 1. And with a 0, 0 as input, it means that we go back to the 0, 1 state with a 1 as output. If we have a 0, 1 as an input, 
it means that we go here to the one zero state with a one as an output. If we have one zero represented by this input, we stay in the one one state with a one as an output. And finally, if we have one one input in the one one state, we will stay in this same state with a one as an output. So this concludes our completion of the truth table. Now that we have our truth table, we can write our three Boolean functions. So the functions that we want to write is Q1+, plus, Q2+, plus, and danger. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do as before. We're going to, for each of the functions, we're going to look at where do we find a one in the truth table, and then we can write the expression for realizing exactly that one. So let's start with Q1+. plus. This can be written as, and now we start with this first one, so this can be written as Q1 prime, Q2, G1, G2 prime. The next one in our truth table for this Q1 plus function is here. So this can be written as Q1, Q2 prime, G1 prime, G2 prime. The next one here can be written as Q1, Q2 prime, G1 prime, and G2. Continuing to the next one in the truth table, this can be written as Q1, Q2 prime, G1, G2. This one here can be written as Q1, Q2, G1 prime, G2. And now we can continue to the next one that we have here, which can be written as Q1, Q2, G1, G2 prime. And the final one in the truth table for the Q1 plus function can be written as Q1, Q2, G1, G2. The next function that we want to write is Q2 plus. And we write this in the same way as for Q1 plus. We look at the ones in the truth tables. We start with the first one that we can find, which can be represented by Q1 prime, Q2 prime, G1 prime, G2. The next one we can write as Q1 prime, Q2, G1 prime, G2 prime. The next one here we can write as Q1 prime, Q2, G1 prime, G2. The next we can write as Q1 prime, Q2, G1, G2 prime. Then we go to the next part of the truth table and here we have a one here. So we can write this as Q1, Q2 prime, G1, G2. Then we go to this one over here. We can write this one as Q1, Q2, G1 prime, G2 prime. And the next one here we can write as Q1, Q2, G1, G2 prime. And the final one here we can write as Q1, Q2, G1, G2. So that is the realization of the Q2 plus function. If we look at the danger function, what we can see is that it has ones in all the rows of the truth table except the first row. And of course also the row where we don't really care about what happens. But we don't really care about it, so let's not care about it. So it has ones in all the other rows except for the row where we have all zeros as an input. 
So this can be realized in different ways. So let us look at two different ways to realize this one. We can first just take this first row where we have all zeros as an input and then we can write that row down. So this would be Q1 prime, Q2 prime, G1 prime, G2 prime. But what we can see here is that this will output a zero and all of the other rows will output once. So what we can just do is that we take the result of this function and we put this into a NOT gate, an inverter that will give us the complement of the function. So this will actually be a realization of this function. Another way, alternatively, we could, if we want, think about the OR function. So the definition of the OR function is that if at least one of the inputs is a 1, then the output will be a 1. And this is exactly what we have in the situation for the danger function. So we could also write this as Q1 OR, Q2 OR, G1 OR, G2. And these two realizations are equivalent for this function. These functions that we have written now are very large and messy. And this is a bit unfortunate. What we want to do is to make them as small and efficient as possible. Luckily, this is possible for this function and we can write it in a much more simple way like this. Now, going from this expression that we have up here, or the expressions that we have up here, to these expressions is not something that we have done yet, but this is, will be a very important part of the course to actually go from expressions and make them as small as possible. When we have these small expressions, it is a little bit easier to realize the circuits using our gates. So here we have the input G1, G2. We have the input to our combinational circuit Q1 and Q2. And then we have the different functions. So we have the danger function, we have the function for Q1+, plus, and we have the function for Q2+. Plus. And you can follow these gates and the wires here and see that it actually corresponds to the minimized function that we have written here.